uh, calling to order of the September 14th Public Affairs Committee meeting. Uh, and just a reminder to stay tuned after this meeting uh, for the Finance Committee meeting coming up. Um, I'm going to jump in as our first item. I'm going to move up item 6A um, because there's a proclamation to read. And um, I didn't know that I don't know this individual personally. And after I uh, took a look at the proclamation and understood it, I, I wish I had known the person. What a, what a, a lovely uh, tribute. So uh, it's my honor um, to go ahead and read the proclamation. Uh, for Ronald Wesley Dacent. Uh, it's a proclamation from the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township. Whereas Cheltenham Township, with immense respect, recognizes Ronald Wesley Dacent for his 50 years of service at Keystone Screw Incorporated. And whereas Ronald Wesley Dacent, a longtime resident of Cheltenham Township, began working at Keystone Screw at the age of 19, immediately after arriving from Trinidad and Tobago, and whereas Ronald Wesley Dason took his job very seriously by attending the Ac Academy of Advanced Transportation where he received a certificate in transportation and traffic management. And whereas Ronald Wesley Dason was the president of Delta Nu Alpha Transportation Fraternity, Luxmont Chapter 296 from 1989 to 1990. And whereas Ronald Wesley Dason provides untiring support to the nonprofit organization, Regenerating Our Offspring Through Stories, Inc., where he is currently the treasurer. Now, therefore, Daniel B. Norris, president of the Board of Commissioners of Cheltenham Township, does hereby recognize Ronald Wesley Dason for his 50 years of service in and around the community. Done in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, under our hands and the seal of the township of Cheltenham, this 14th day of September, 2022, in the year of the township of Cheltenham, the 123rd. And it's signed by our president, Daniel B. Norris, and attested by our township manager, Robert Zinkowski. So congratulations, Mr. Desat. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank, you, thank you. you. Congratulations. We are thank really you. proud to have such a devoted worker in our midst, in our community. Um, what are you doing for retirement? Oh, I'm just helping my wife with a nonprofit, which is helping the students in our community learn to read from the fourth grade on up you know, because there's a really big need for that right now. So she's really working hard towards that goal. Wonderful. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Sounds like you're not gonna be retired for long. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> but he, he, failed to mention, he failed to mention that we would we are going to become Rhodes Scholars. So everywhere ah. we go, ah. yes, we're gonna learn about where, you know, the history. For instance, we went to, uh, and I'm not going to stay long. We went to Niagara Falls, and he says, "Where does all this water come from?" So, <laughs> yeah. so can he Creek, yeah. <laughs> Abington, that Abington. <laughs> stay still. So, thank you so much. We appreciate this. Thank you. Thank, no, we appreciate you. Uh, thank we're you we're so glad much. for the good news and wish you the very best. Thanks Appreciate so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us this evening. Okay. Thank Thank you. You. Bye bye. Bye now. Okay, uh, we'll go on to item number one, uh, the approval of expenditures over twenty five hundred. Uh, recommend the board of commissioners approve a blanket purchase for for Home Depot in the amount of ten thousand dollars for administrative services. 
um, this is a, a an occasional uh, anything uh, staff wants to add to that. We'll we'll just uh, go ahead. It's, it's it's all you, Alan. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Mr. Uh, so, hello. We usually we use Home Depot for uh, all of our local purchases, anything we need, uh, building repairs, um, and just recently we uh, broke in Public Works. They were using Lowe's. It's it's closer. It's in the township. So now Public mm -hmm. Works is using Home Depot. We're using Home Depot. So it just in, uh, increased our cost, and uh, we just had to uh, extend our uh, increase the purchase order. I put a new purchase order in for it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but it's it, it's not more expensive. You're saying at Home Depot than Lowe's. <laughs> no, it's just convenient. Need... It's township. Yeah, it's it's uh, okay. It's good. Uh, it's, Keep nice, the money nice in short hand. Yeah, yeah. Keep it local. <laughs> Exactly. All right. So um, I'll go ahead and make that motion uh, uh, to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, item number two, receipt of reports, um, property maintenance supervisor. Any discussion on that? All right. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, to B. Uh, public information. Item one, approval of payment to Advantage Print and Design in the amount of 5,394 for printing and mailing the township's fall newsletter and postage cost not to exceed 4,500. Um, staff want to talk about that or update us on that? Sure. Um, so after our August meeting, I reached out to some other printers to get cost options. It was the consensus of the committee to move forward with um, mailing, as usual, our 16-page newsletter. Um, I did look into some other companies that offer the advertising option. However, there were none that would be able to put a campaign together in time to do it for this fall. So I will, um, if not next month, the following, have another proposal for you for a company with an advertising model to move forward. However, the, uh, the attachment to this agenda showed the pricing that I got um, and Advantage still came in at the most cost-effective option. I looked through our past four newsletters and uh, reached out to everyone who advertised in them. Several were interested in still advertising through uh, the township. So we have uh, amassed about 3,000 to 4,000, I'm expecting. All right. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? I'll take a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice job, Thank Lauren. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, item 2C, uh, the report from Parks and Rec. Any discussion on that? Take a motion to receive. The move. The move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, thank you, you Ms. Revitz. You got, got off easy tonight. Um, item 3, uh, receipt of the committee meeting minutes. Uh, and many folks were on vacation. So we'll jump down to the Civil Rights Task Force. A couple of questions came up during that meeting. So I'd like to turn uh, over those two points to our staff to, um, to update us on those, those items. So the uh, social media presence uh, for interested committees, citizen committees, want to um, want to have a social media presence. Uh, what is the policy? What do we tell them? I can take a stab at that one. Um, our policy is that, um, and I had double checked this with our township solicitor, is that we do not um, want our individual citizen committees to be having their own social media presence. Anything that they want to advertise should go through um, the township's uh, social media and website. Um, 
<clears throat> because they are a representative of the township, so it should be on township uh, social media. Now we have with other, um, with some of them, if they want to be a resident and start a uh, social media, um, <clears throat> say a Facebook page or Twitter account to talk about things that are of interest that, of to them, they can, but it has to be very clear that it is not a township. They don't represent the township at all. So. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Madam Chairperson? Yes, go ahead. Can Just, you, you know, a uh, perfect example is uh, the presence of Rhonda Issers and her her site and the consistent placement of information, some of which is township authorized and some of which is uh, is just you know commentary. So I think we there's a model there for as aggressive or assertive as some resident wants to be um, in posting both formal information as well as things that are quote unquote individually focused. Yeah, another example is um, representatives of the EDTF uh, did a spinoff uh, Instagram page called I Love Cheltenham, uh, but it is clearly not a township um, Instagram account. It is a resident run account. Um, and that one, as a courtesy, they would let the township know they don't need permission to do that kind of thing. Well, I mean, they, they, they talked about it, so, so we are aware, um, but if there's anything they want us to share um, from their account um, that is newsworthy, um, we can, um, okay. or they can share our information on their account. That way. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And then uh, also, uh, we're asking for uh, an update, if there is any, on uh, the ongoing questions regarding a township human relations commission. So we can just clear up where that stands right now. I guess I can, uh, I can take that. Uh, so we are, we, we did recently meet with the, um, the solicitor, meaning me and, and the township manager we are going to schedule quarterly meetings uh, with the HRC, the, the participants that are interested in participating with an HRC, uh, take recommendations from them on any changes that need to be made to the ordinance and start putting together uh, the, the commission again. Great, all right. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Samuels. Okay, uh, any discussion on that follow-up? Great, thank you all very much. Uh, Staff, uh, moving on to number four, we see to the staff meeting minutes from August. Any discussion? Okay, take a motion. So moved. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, old business for public affairs. Um, and again, calling for updates on a number of items here from staff just to Make sure everybody's on the same page on a lot of these continuing uh, items that you know, the public always asks about. Um, first with the PennDOT traffic study, where are we on that? Um, the PennDOT is proceeding along with the recommendations. Um, uh, they are beginning to schedule a lot of the improvements that they had, uh, that they had spelled out. So as soon as we has, have a schedule, we'll make sure we post that. Um, the second part of this is PennDOT is taking comments from residents. I know that we've received a number of them. Uh, today, I uh, want to thank Teresa and Tom for you know, uh, doing a survey with residents. That was sent out this afternoon to PennDOT. So PennDOT has a lot of the questions and suggestions uh, that was sent to them. So our hope is that within several weeks, uh, we'll get some response back for them and then uh, bring that back in front of the uh, commissioners again, as it was before, uh, as a, an additional work that they would be looking to consider to take on based on these recommendations. I guess I'm not, my comments were also forwarded. Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry. Yes, Commissioner. Yes, <laughs> yes, they were. Yes, Thank you. yes all, all of that we had. And, and this is going to be a work, a work, continual work in right. progress. And I'm appreciative to PennDOT that I'm not sure of any other community in the Commonwealth. I'm sure there are, but any in this area where 
you know, they spent the money, their money to do a study, they're spending money to make the, you know, some expensive repairs here. Um, and we just got to continue on with this process until we, we get it to where there's a comfort level. And we know to a big portion of this is enforcement. And that's going to come right on the shoulders of the right. police department. Okay. And, and maybe you'll give us, uh, I guess, monthly uh, reports on whatever they're, they're doing at least. Yes. Uh, along with the, okay. That's Great. Correct. Thank you very much. If, if you'd like, Commissioner, we could just keep this on as a regular uh, agenda yes. item and we can just update. Yeah. And okay. it doesn't matter what committee, you know, I'm happy to have it here, but if somebody else, if it's more timely to put it on an, another committee, that's fine too, depending on when the news comes in. Okay. So thank you. All right. Uh, the Army Corps uh, and, and uh, how's that project coming along? We haven't heard about that in a while. Allison, you want to take that? Um, I actually have not participated in anything on this project. I assumed it was commissioners who were. Allison, let me jump in. Yeah. Um, it was there was an attempt by Scott Sanderson to bring uh, the regional director of planning from the Army Corps to here. That uh, that got derailed for whatever reason. But in the last email uh, discussion exchange with Scott Sanderson, um, and we have to get back on on regular schedule. Uh, there was an indication that by October, the funding uh, to authorize the six basin projects was in fact moving forward. Now, whether that comes to fruition, we've gone through this a couple of times, but there was a level of, um, let's say assertiveness that was uncharacteristic over the last couple of years. So uh, I would say we, we can get back to Scott and uh, next month, for, for public affairs, I'll make sure that we have an update and even request that we get a written report because it sounded as if it was moving favorably after what, 14 years so, or, or maybe more. Great, I, I appreciate that. And I think what they need to keep hearing from us on a regular basis is that we want the update monthly. You know, right. we, we want to see submit, that progress. We, yeah. we were asked to submit formal, um, fiduciary uh, obligations on behalf of the township, which we did because in the scenario, I believe we're responsible for about, right now about 30, 35% of the total fees. Um, so again, it, it, it has progressed beyond where our expectations were at least from a couple of years back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, same, same question for the DEP uh, Glenside flood project. I can take that one. Yeah. Um, so DEP has hired on um, a firm to work on the legal descriptions for easements uh, that are required for the project. So I believe their estimate is that it would be done sometime uh, ne early next year. Um, so after we have that information, we'll be able to um, start communicating with property owners to acquire the necessary easements. Um, on our end, we have been uh, reaching out to the three property owners that we're going to purchase outright. Um, so I'm working with their their legal representatives on that one. So nothing firm yet, but we're still in communication. Okay, thank you. And finally, the we've talked you know multiple times about the plastic bag ordinance, uh, noise ordinance and the naming of the streams. So where are we on those? Uh, well, I can pick the uh, plastic bags and streams. Um, as far as plastic bag ordinance, we have a draft that's going to be presented to the EAC next month, or actually this month. Um, next week, I believe it is. Uh, so if they are um, supportive of that draft, then our hope is that it, they will make a recommendation for the board or I guess it would be public works committee to review in October. And that, um, that has been through our legal as well already. Great. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then as far as stream namings, um, the EAC and um, historical commission have um, discussed that at the last month's EAC meeting, um, seems like it's kind of a little bit more of a complex um, issue than that had originally anticipated. 
um, instead of the, I guess it was six streams that they were going to name, um, there's additional streams. So I think they want to look, take a, another look at it and have a little bit more of a comprehensive look at the streams, um, see if they can come up with some names for them. I think they also want to take a look at the names that were originally proposed and turn it into a little bit more of a public process um, mm -hmm. to help with selections. Um, so uh, a subcommittee of the Historical Commission and EAC are going to be meeting and kind of working out a process um, on how to do that. Great. Allison, let them know there are seven commissioners, so they have to come up with seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Easy dopey. <laughs> how, how about thank you very much for all this. Uh, the, where are we on the noise ordinance? Is Scott still here? I think he was working on that with the solicitor. Okay. I don't see him. All right. Um, and I think I think we did get a um, a note from the solicitor saying that. Maybe this should have been handled in in public safety, but um, indicating that there is a lot already written into our code, and it really does require more enforcement uh, because there is leeway there to to uh, you know he, he thinks the legal I think uh, underpinning some of it is is already there. It isn't necessarily being uh, implemented. So. Okay, well, well, we'll look forward to that. All right, thank you all very much. Um, so we'll, unless there's further discussion on old business, is there any other old business? Okay, we'll go on to uh, item 6B, new business. Um, B, we've already done A. Um, Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a resolution authorizing the disposition of municipal records for the year ending 2021 in accordance with the Pennsylvania Municipal Records Act of 1968 and the Municipal Records Manual approved December 16, 2008, last revised March 28, 2019. So then we got uh, and you'll see it in our agenda materials, pages and pages of stuff we're going to get rid of. I wish y'all had come to my house and do the same thing with my files. <laughs> um, but I actually have some questions about those. Do, do any of my colleagues have questions first? No. All right. Well, I'm sorry to do this. I, it, it's not really that I'm a pack rat, but I do have some questions about what is really being held on to or how. Um, and, and maybe it's just that I don't understand the regulations. I know we do this every year. Um, but so things like accident reports before 2016. Now, somewhere, you know, and sometimes when we're looking for, you know, whether we need a stop sign somewhere, we look at crash history for 10 years. Do we still, are we still gonna be able to access crash history for 10 years at that site if we get rid of what we're saying we're gonna get rid of? So you may not be able to answer that now, but that is that is one of my questions. And I think I think that's important that we at least have access to that data so that we can make good policy decisions. And yeah, I guess the, um, just going on that, is that under like uh, public works or police, do you know, or because um, it I, depends on what type of accident report it is. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, it, you know, the, this, you, you I, saw the I, materials, the agenda materials. I don't know. Uh, that's what I'm asking. Um, is there, uh, you know, in terms of um, the zoning, it, it said that they were going to get rid of the zoning hearing board records. Well, what and the transcripts and stuff like that. So what bothered me about that is many of the zoning hearing board decisions say something like it's con conditioned on the substantial adherence to the testimony presented. Well, if we get rid of the testimony that was presented, how do we know if they're in substantial compliance? 
Sure. Right. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. I don't understand if that's sure. being maintained or not. They, they actually are. Um, so this um, list, which seems extremely comprehensive, isn't everything. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so there are documents that the township is required to um, retain permanently. So while it does say zoning hearing board applications can be destroyed, what it says must be retained permanently are the actual decisions. So basically what it is is saying, hey, and even with say a subdivision and land development file, you need to retain certain things out of that file, but other things you can get rid of. So it's making sure the pertinent information is there and then helping thin out a lot of the things that are unnecessary. I know when I was doing land development, I would have, I don't know, a whole filing cabinet full for one project, but really I only needed one folder at the end of the day. Well, yes and no. I, I mean, I agree that you want to get rid of a lot of it. But again, if there, if the decision says it's based on, it's conditioned on substantial adherence to their testimony, we get rid of their testimony. And that may be included. I, I don't have the, the permanent retention, but it just says you can, you can get rid of the application itself, not the other items. Okay, except that Madam it, Chairperson. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so a similar situation. We still have unresolved litigation with contractors from the Interceptor A project, which ended in 2019. Um, and there's still questions or controversy in some of the um, issues related to the conveyance of our sewer system with respect to easements. So things of that nature, anything that has the either historic um, potential for litigation or there's active litigation that has yet to be resolved. We need to make sure that that documentation does not get uh, deep six to the point where right. it can't be retrieved. So I think that's a really critical thing. And I think we have a new solicitor. Um, we probably need some guidance from the, our solicitor's firm about what has to be protected uh, in these matters. So I think it's really critical before we agree to moving all this stuff, that we just make sure somebody takes and puts responsible eyeballs on anything that has the potential either for existing litigation or has controversy associated with it, which could create a, a litigation um, situation. Oh, absolutely. Anything that um, could potentially uh, be subject to litigation, we're required to pull aside and not destroy. Um, in fact, um, since we have so many new staff members, our township solicitor was in the township uh, building this week and did some training on this very issue to make sure that, you know, we're not too heavy handed when we do just um, get rid of our documents as much as we would love to get rid of a lot of it. Um, he, and he is there for guidance and I see Minji is here as well and we've been relying on her. Uh, for right to know requests and, and stuff like that, which is, this is really important for those types of requests, which we get hit with quite a lot. Um, because if you don't get rid of a document that you're supposed to get rid of by law, then it is subject to litigation. So it's also a little bit of a protection for the township oh. as well. So Allison, does that fall in your lap? I, I mean, I think we need an archivist of some kind, somebody who's archiving and at least being able to track certain documentation that is in fact critical for these kinds of issues. And I'm, you know, uh, no reflection, but I believe we had some issues with our prior management, things not being properly maintained and properly documented. And I think we have to have a procedure in place. And I understand we have obligations to, to remove things. I also understand that, you know, vulnerability or exposure by not having information would be more grievous than having tossed out something um, that you know shouldn't have been tossed out. So. Oh, absolutely. We have so many records, um, I'm sure you've all seen, that um, haven't really been filed the best over the years. And having someone on staff dedicated totally toward managing and cleaning up our files would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> and in your just, budget. And maybe just to <laughs> add, if I can just add to that, a lot of the records um, were flooded in the basement of this right. building. They also have a nice coating of asbestos on them. So that, and we've got some stored over in uh, Roland. 
that the ceiling and walls are falling in on. So, I mean, it's that's kind of how records were, were kept. So this is it's a big undertaking to get this, you know, get to where we have to go. And then we're going to rely heavily upon the solicitor to guide us through all of these. Do we have it any in Mar-a-Lago? They won't get burnt if they're covered with asbestos. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead, I may. Commissioner Armand. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Zienkowski and Ms. Elliott, do, do we have um, sort of plans going forward for some sort of transition to the 21st century in terms of our record keeping? And, uh, you, you know, uh, obviously there's always going to be paper, but, but are we looking to have electronically stored files and information uh, moving forward and transitioning to that sort of uh, system? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, this was a, another topic of conversation this week was, um, do we have, especially for some of these permanent records like our, our minutes and ordinances, can we keep them electronically or do we have to keep paper copies? And and the answer seems to be no, you can keep electronic copies. So uh, that, that helps us out a little bit is trying to come up with a, a good way to organize as many files as possible electronically um, we're looking at a number of options to to help with this. Perhaps as we as we dispose of some of these things that are on this schedule of things to be uh, eliminated, um, things like the, the items that Commissioner Rappaport have identified as and Commissioner Ziegenfeld have identified as potentially important information going forward, even though that we may have passed their their deadline. Uh, storing those items electronically may be, uh, may be the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, with the way in which we would file too, um, in, you know, cabinets or that is a whole different way than what they are now. And uh, I think it's a consensus of everyone that, I mean, it's a guess what, what we have because, and I've never seen it. This is a unique style of, <laughs> of record keeping. So a lot of it too is going to be, you know, put out on the ground, the parking lot or somewhere just to kind of push documents in the right areas. Cause it's a interesting batch of paper. Generous. It's a generous description. Yes. So let me ask this. So there are a couple of, I, I think, specific questions that we have. Should we, is your recommendation to go ahead and pass this with those questions still to be answered prior to disposal or should we just wait and do this next week after we've submitted those questions to you and you've been able to answer them definitively you can uh, you submit your questions to me that's great um yeah I, I think our staff is anxious to have it passed next week so, <laughs> so we can start well, so, cleaning yeah okay so how, how about this those of us with specific questions, uh, concerns. We'll document those hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, by the end of tomorrow, we'll get them into you. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll, otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll suggest that we go ahead and um, take a motion to, um, to go ahead and uh, approve this item. I still motion. need approval. <laughs> okay, uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, any other new business? All right. We'll move on to announcements. Um, something about the Tucane Creek Trail Part One construction. So I'll turn that over to whoever whoever it's wants me. it. Uh, <laughs> it should be Part Three. Um, so I apologize on that. Um, okay. Just just wanted to announce the long awaited uh, segment of trail between um, Harrison Avenue and New Second Street through Gimble Field will be starting the first, well, I guess that is part one, uh, first part of construction. Um, this is has been funded through three different grants. Um, the first is the Transportation Alternatives Program Grant, which is federal dollars, um, which significantly delayed the project because it requires so many more clearances to go through. Um, but it was hard one and uh, we are ready to, we've gone out to bid, we've awarded it, um, I think to, to Loftus a couple, like a month or two ago. So they're getting ready to start clearing and um, 
roughing out the trail so they can install the bridge. Um, and then we will be going out to bid for the second part of uh, the trail, hopefully in this winter, early spring, so that the next phase, which is funded through um, Department of Nat uh, Conservation and Natural Resources and Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission um, to finish the project. So hopefully by the end of next year, we will have a brand new segment of trail for the Tiffany Creek. Madam Chairperson? Yes, go ahead. There is uh, the e evidence of crushed rock at uh, New Second Street and Tokenic Creek Parkway. I, I believe it's to begin to accommodate the large construction equipment that's going to start to go through. So there's about, I would say, uh, uh, the beginning of a driveway's worth <laughs> of crushed rock there to, to start the process. So people have been wondering what's happening there. And again, we're probably looking at what about a year and a half, Allison, something in that range. That's so correct. There's curiosity, but people are seeing it's the it's the beginning of, of the activity. So finally, uh, nice to see the progress come slowly, but eventually happens. Thank yeah, you. just so you know, the um, bridge will be installed, uh, hopefully and this section will, um, or portion of the project will be completed by the end of March, I believe but we will be in putting uh, barriers up, even though it will look like a rough trail and you can get over the creek just because there's no crossing um, signals for New Second Street. So we don't want to encourage people to cross until all the signalization and markings are in. Sorry about right. that, Dan. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Madam Norris. Chairperson. Yeah. So Allison, just, just so I'm clear, um, does this part of the construction include the Tuckney Creek crossing uh yes over the creek yeah um it'll be a no, prefab bridge no, across the street i'm sorry when oh, I, said okay. I, I meant to say new second i said took any yeah. the, the new second street crossing no that'll be installed as part of the second phase um in order to minimize the scope of all the clearances through the transportation alternatives um, program grant and reduce as much as we could the amount of time spent on that um, we focus primarily on the bridge itself and just roughing out the, the access to the bridge. So the so, new Second Street uh, will, is not planned for two, 2023. Correct. It's for a later date. Oh, no, it'll be done in, uh, hopefully by the end of 2023. So oh, hopefully there should be an entire complete uh, trail cool. with crossing by the end of Thank the year. Thank you. That's what I wanted to do. They, they have Thank not you. yet finished the traffic control component. I know that was something that still was being worked on. There are um, options that were um, presented, but not finally authorized or approved. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments on that? Okay, any other announcements? Uh, I guess uh, we need to remind people uh, uh, that uh, we have the, um, Camp William Penn and Historic Lamont this Saturday, uh, 10 until 4. And that is a neat program. If people haven't been to that, it's definitely worth going. You'll learn oodles of important history uh, and very valuable. Um, okay, any other? Okay, uh, Citizens Forum for Public Works, a uh, public affairs. Okay, uh, as I adjourn, I'm going to remember or remind people to stay tuned for finance. Uh, for adjournment, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.